And get this, I am 11 and a half years younger genetically than I am chronologically. What? Insane. Come on, get it. That's but but for talking. the last, I'd say 15 years, I practice what I preach. Hey friends, welcome to the Dr. X Podcast. I'm his co-host, Dr. Motley, and today we have a very cool guest, a very knowledgeable guest, Amy Raup, and she is a licensed acupuncturist. You've been in practice, Doc, for over 15 Almost 20 years. years? 17 right. years to be exact. Wow. It'll be 18 in December, yeah. Wow, and she is a best-selling author. She has books that focus on fertility and autoimmune and inflammation. Yep. And today we want to talk to you guys about all things health. I'm going to let her talk her mind. She has a new book out. It's the egg diet. It's like it basically you can actually fertilize your body to help fertilize your eggs, basically, to make them stronger and healthier. So thank you, Dr. Rout, for coming up and uh, talking with us on Dr. Axe podcast. And we want to give people information about how to increase their fertility, how to strengthen their fertility in a natural way. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Martley, Motley. I am uh, so excited to be here. I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist. Um, I've been in practice for 17 years and had have a biology and chemistry degree prior to that. And almost was a doctor. I'm a medical school dropout and then became an acupuncturist, but um, give you guys props on your, your doctorate. I chose uh, oh, to study hey. with my mentor instead, actually. Yeah. I'll tell you with the information you put out there, I'm saying like that, I was like, this lady has got smarts and you got things going on in your website that is really amazing. So again, thank you for uh, joining us. And well, we want to dive right in, but I really want everybody out there to know a little bit about yourself. You like you just described, like what got you into the natural health field, like an acupuncture? What started that that drive? Um, it was, you know, I always had an interest in science and in medicine. Uh, you know, in high school, I worked at a health food store when they really weren't that cool. You know, that was like the '90s, the early late '80s. And um, went on to study sciences in college and then applied to medical school. And I actually didn't get in the first round I applied, which I always say at the time was crushing, but probably one of the greatest blessings of my life. So then I went on to do graduate level work in neuroscience as a means to get back into medical school. Like it was kind of like, OK, this is what I'll do. And then my grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. I was studying, researching Alzheimer's disease. That was part of my program. I was out at UCSD in, in California and I just kind of hit this wall where I was like, I'm here in this lab room under this hood studying like cells in a Petri dish to see what's the cause of Alzheimer's disease. But like physically in my family, what I witnessed for her was depression, poor diet, um, loneliness, you know, all kind of compounded to this health state for her. And there was probably chronic illness that, you know, led up to it. And I would keep bringing this up in our team meetings when we were talking about, you know, trying to find these amyloid beta plaques and what was the root cause of Alzheimer's disease. And I was getting really stuck because I felt like there was all this environmental influence that we weren't talking about. Um, and the mentor that I was working under, he, he said to me, he's like, I think you're going to, you know, you have too much compassion. I really think this isn't going to be the right field for you. <laughs> and he was really fascinated with Chinese medicine. He was actually reading the web that has no weaver. Like he had been oh. introduced to Ted Kapchuk. It was a fascinating story. And so he was like, you got to read this book. And I'll never forget. It was like a family vacation. I came back home to Jersey. We were in Long Beach Island and I was reading the web that has no weaver on the beach. And at this point, like I'm in graduate school, like I'm about to, like I've retaken my MCATs. I got better scores. I'm about to get into their medical school. And I, I don't know what came over me. I think it was just, you know, it, intuition, inspiration and PCOM San Diego was just down the street from UCSD. So I went and I did, you know, they had like an open house and it just, it spoke to me. It was like, oh, this is where I'm sp supposed to be. And so I stayed on as a research scientist at UCSD actually for about a year and a half after I enrolled at PCOM San Diego. And the rest is history, as I say, like I never looked back after that. It just, it was, it was the right fit. Oh, I uh, completely, but when you mentioned the web has no weaver, I think that anytime like you're 
in a, a mindset like when I first went and started into school like the first thing that I really wanted to try to get into was uh, of course in like neurology like I was really thinking about doing some kind of neurosurgery like I thought that would be some route for me um, and then I, I heard about like some of the uh, the depression that uh, many of those docs go through because it's so high pressure but also like high amounts of malpractice and people are stressed all the time but then uh, learning more about like kinesiology and acupuncture and Chinese medicine. Uh, my family line, like my mom's from South Korea, but the old line comes from China. So like the old uncles in the mountains did like Qigong and herbs and all these things. And so I think it kind of just struck a chord with me and it, it went that route. So I understand it's like your, your whole mind shift, my mind shift is just like uh, going into this natural realm where you think, oh, the body can heal in many ways, you know, and I really appreciate well, that was it. It was like, oh, you know, it was just this thing where, and I remember myself, I was not in good health. Like here I was about to become a medical doctor. I was definitely drinking too much. I would smoke cigarettes when I drank. I had an eating disorder. Like, honestly, it was like, a, it was chaos in my body. Yeah. And going to acupuncture for the first time, I wanted to experience it. And I remember, I talk about this in my first book, but the acupuncturist said to me, what did you eat today? And I had had a balance bar. And, you know, those were like the trendy health bars at the time, right? I mean, it was basically a glorified Snickers bar. And um, she said to me, that's not food. That has no energy whatsoever to give you chi. And like my hair was like, you know, I was very unhealthy. Honestly, I'm so much healthier now, 20 years later. But um, it was such, it just, all of a sudden there was just this whole shift and I was dealing with my own health issues and Chinese medicine was what healed me on, on the mental level, the emotional, physical, nutritional, it just, it, it cracked me open. And yeah, I'm such a huge advocate of, of the medicine we practice and just seeing, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of Western medicine as well, but seeing the two together, the integration and just kind of understanding the root of disease really speaks to me. I see it and on your page and on your website. I love the way that you intertwine the two because all of you are listening out there. You should check it out definitely because especially when you're talking about female hormones and about pregnancy and having to freeze eggs and um, like her book, The Egg Quality Diet has, I mean, gracious, so many great, not just say tips, but lifestyle changes that we want to go over. I mean, this is like very important for people. Uh, I remember uh, reading in parts of the book and also listening on some of your um, your posts and videos about individuals and ladies out there that say, hey, um, can I still have a baby at this age? Yeah. Um, can it still be possible? And you go over this. So I was just writing down notes because I mean, we, you know, I, I practice uh, Chinese medicine as, uh, as much as possible every day. And I love the fact that, I mean, like you said, like you can analyze um, an individual and just by pulse points or looking at certain parts of their body or skin and finding out certain areas of the body that may show some symptomatology. And, it, and it's amazing, isn't it, uh, um, Amy, that when people, you can look at somebody's face and literally look at the lines and the crevices and the puffiness and the swelling and go, oh, that part's imbalanced in your body. And then they go get a blood test and it comes back true. So that's what we love about it, guys. Yes. And I want to get back to your book. That's the egg Thanks. quality diet. And you wrote this, especially like what? Now, this is the question I have. Yeah. What was the call? You know, the calling, like the download, like, uh, you know, yeah, there was, it a, was need. a download. It was a total download, yeah. by the way. There was a need, <laughs> right? Like you, there yeah. had to be. I know people were coming to you for it. what was the need? Like, I mean, that may be really general to ask, but I just want to know, like, what was that inspiration you felt that that come up for you? So, I mean, it's a bit of a backstory, but I think it all it all has a point. But so. I wrote Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, which is my second book. It came out in 2014. Um, and I think it's still, it's an awesome book. It, it's, it's like a multifaceted approach to optimizing fertility from mental, you know, health to physical nutritional. And in, in there, I have a recommended diet, which is very similar to what's in the egg quality diet, but not, uh, broken down enough maybe. And so, but as I was writing that book, what became very apparent to me um, and, and I'm sure you see it too in, in your clinical practice, and it makes sense from a Chinese medicine perspective was, you know, we're told, oh, women are dealing with fertility challenges because they have either PCOS or endometriosis or they're too old. Like those are the basic things. And, or maybe there's a structural issue, which is usually due to endometriosis. Um, and so as practitioners that like want to practice and, and work on women dealing with fertility challenges, that's what we think. Okay, what, what do I do for endo? What do I do for PCOS? What do I do for advanced maternal age, right? Like, you know, Chinese medicine, we're like, you got to build the kidney jing, you know, or whatever it is. Um, 
And so, but as I was researching, yes, you can get pregnant. And mind you, I have a research background, so I'm a total nerd. I'm constantly reading the research. I love it. Like, I just jive on it. My husband's always like, can you read a novel? I'm like, no, I can't. I got, I'm like, I'm in like the fertility and sterility, you know, magazine. He's like, just read a novel, honey. And I can't turn it off. Um, but so I did, I like, I felt like I discovered something. I was like, oh my gosh, endometriosis acts like an autoimmune disease. We know it's an inflammatory condition. PCOS acts like an autoimmune condition. It has, obviously it's an inflammatory condition as well. Um, is age really the biggest factor? Because there's research that doesn't support that age is the biggest issue dealing with fertility challenges. So it, it got me on this whole kind of autoimmune inflammatory spin. And so the book had already come out. Then I wrote a book on autoimmunity, mainly because my editors wanted a book specifically on autoimmunity. They didn't want pregnancy and autoimmunity, which is what I really wanted to write. And um, got into Hashimoto's, got into celiac, and, and just started to see the correlation between these longstanding chronic illnesses, whether or not they were diagnosed and or treated, that then led to these fertility challenges. Wow. So we were overlooking something, right? And, yeah. and in body belief, I get into more of how to treat autoimmunity and inflammation very specifically. And I talk a lot about mental, emotional health. And, and then I also kind of go more autoimmune paleo slash Chinese medicine with the diet. Like, so it's a little stricter than, yes, you can get pregnant, more of an elimination style diet. But what I started to see clinically, right? So mind you, I'm a clinician. We have, I have an online business. I've had one for way before the pandemic. I've been coaching women all over the world for uh, five years, six years at this point. I started to see that when I put them on more of the if I call it the body belief style diet, I start, their gut started to heal, their immune system started to regulate, endo, PCOS started to get rectified, egg quality improved. Like these girls that weren't getting pregnant for eight years, six years, or had poor quality eggs, all of a sudden they're six years older and they're making better eggs. They're getting pregnant with healthy children. And so I thought I was like, I'm on to something, you know, and I, but I, as a clinician, right, I, I have PDFs that I share with every new client. You know, we have, I have like five coaches at this point. So we have a, a, a you know, platform and a protocol. And so I, I had created this PDF that was basically the egg quality diet and I would give it to every new patient. And it's, it's an elimination diet that, you know, has, is very rooted, I think in Chinese medicine, a lot of cooked, warm, colorful foods, lots of broths, but also meshed with autoimmune paleo. You know, I love uh, Sarah Ballantyne's book, um, The Paleo Approach. It's just, you know, so helpful. And a lot of stuff that you and Dr. Axe talk about. And, you know, I just did a ton of research on that and kind of compiled this, this diet. And it's worked for years in my practice. And fairly recently, I, I woke up one morning and I had this like, aha of, I need to make a, a book. I need to actually say, this is the egg quality diet. Because what I started to see, we were collecting food diaries. And you would see women like, oh, I'm doing the diet. I'm following the diet. Uh, you know, I've cut out gluten. I've cut out dairy. I've cut out soy. And then I'd get their diet. And mind you, I'd been recommending like six to eight servings of vegetables and like bone broth and good quality protein. And I'd get their, their food diaries and they were eating like one or two servings of vegetables, maybe five servings of fruit and a lots of processed packaged gluten-free foods. Like, so they're gluten-free, they're dairy-free, lots of like almond milk and almond cream cheese, you know, and it was all kind of like this process packaged. So it hit me that in some of it, I take responsibility for, uh, I gave them a seven day sample menu. Like I did not give them enough clarity of what they needed to do. So I said, I'm going to give them 100 days because all the people that coach with me, they get 60 days. So I was like, we're going to expand it. We're going to make it hundred days. We're going to give them exactly what every day should look like. Like, this is what your day should look like. This is what you should be eating all macronutrient balance. So that was another thing that I found is uh, the macronutrients, you know, women trying to get pregnant need more fat, right? And we, and, and good, a good amount of carbohydrates, but really fat and protein and like maybe 25%, 20% carbs, depending on the client. But, and where are those carbs coming from? They should be coming from vegetables, not grains. And so I started playing around with the macronutrients. I had it all macro balanced. And I just said, and then there's recipes, there's shopping. It's like, I was like, let's just make this a book because it's such good information and helps so many women. And then there was newer research that, you know, the research junkie in me really wanted a book to come out that, that profiled like the 2020, 2021 research that is showing if we optimize mitochondrial function, 
who gives a crap what your age is. Like if you're still menstruating and ovulating and you have optimal you know, mitochondrial function and we improve cellular health, you can make a healthy baby. I have women that are 48 making healthy embryos with their own eggs. Like it's, it's doable. And so to, I want to empower women and their partners. I think it's a good diet, especially if there's sperm health issues as well, but also educate you know, not just the consumer, but other practitioners, right? I do a lot of speaking to, you know, people in our field about don't just treat endometriosis. Don't just treat polycystic. Like look at what is going on under the hood. Like there is typically an inflammatory reaction, uh, autoimmunity and or gut, you know, usually it's always stemming from gut dysbiosis, but that we need to go in and you know, and it's the same thing in Chinese medicine theory, like the spleen stomach theory, that's the, the school of the earth. Like that is what we got to fix and everything should flourish. Like if the body's not getting pregnant, it is a clear cut sign that the body is saying, I don't have it. I don't have the goods to make a baby. Sorry, I'm just surviving. So how do we get them into thriving mode? And, and I saw this diet as, um, you know, I think it's only one part, of course, mental, emotional, spiritual, tremendous supplements, tremendous lifestyle, movement, sleep, all, and I highlight all that in, in all of my books. Um, but the diet piece was, you know, it just felt like women kept saying, no, I'm doing everything and I'm still not getting pregnant. And then when I was like, just send me a food diary. And then I looked, I'm like, you know, bless you, you are doing so much and I give you credit, but you're, you're missing the boat on, you know, they weren't doing their liver pills, which I'm a huge fan of. And they, yeah, you know, they were missing, you know, it, really the vegetables too. I, I mean, I think we need the veggies to really give us the antioxidants and help detoxify the liver. But so that's where it came from, where it was like, there's this need and, and I will take, and I talked to many friends who are also authors of, of health books. And I said, think about it. We give them one chapter on diet in most of our books, right? Maybe two. So why not just make a whole book and actually map out every single day for 100 days what you are to eat? It's so good. Okay. So all of you out there listening. Okay. So we say autoimmune. And I think it's amazing when you talk about autoimmune and gut. And I, I say in the office and not to digress and go into what I see in the office, but like a lot of times. Do you see this too, Amy, like when um, a patient comes in and, and they've had fertility issues and uh, they think they are eating the right things and then we do different types of testing in the office and finally identify something like um, almonds. Yeah, they're, they're really sensitive to almonds and almonds are good, guys. We're not saying they're bad, but like in some way, I'm like, heavens, that did actually inflame them so badly. Oh, like their, their pericardium was thrown off a lot of times, like, and you, you'll find out, like you say, the stomach and the spleen, um, when she refers to that guys, like the earth element within Chinese medicine is one of the biggest contributors to all overall health. So when we're talking about how it actually, what you digest, the earth element can be, they say, almost like in a way turned into the other elements because everything you eat becomes you. And that's the one thing, do you find that um, even when we talk about mental, emotional we talk about biochemical health it most people don't stop eating that's the one no, way that i love about this book you have to address what they eat to, to overall health because you can you can not process your emotions if you don't want to or you can just ignore them all day <laughs> like you're not gonna stop eating you, but, you know <laughs> and that, that's what i think right. when you say like increasing so like even on the list when i was reading and i was writing down notes but you say like, we do eat too many trans fats so i'm asking like we're talking about inflammatory agents that cause autoimmune. We talk about gut health and each book goes through that. I think it's a great way in the book to, when you say map it out, because some people get so tired and we know this, that they do want that kind of coaching. We're gonna talk about your coaching and all your platform. We gotta get that, people get on this too. Now with this, when you made the whole book with all the, the diet plans, I also saw that um, you talked about, um, which I loved, the nerd part of me too, is like you talked about the FSH and the luteinizing hormones and you took that complicated uh, hormonal um, information and made it very approachable and digestible. But they, they, you could have even told people out there that you can actually take those levels and they may quote seem in the normal, but you said, no, you can really tell a lot of health about your eggs from those yeah. levels. And I want you to touch a little bit on this. You talked about your own personal journey about genetics, how you can use a genetics test to find out your chronological age as opposed to your physiological age. And yeah, what you watched kind of my stories you? last week. So I yeah, I, yeah, I read, I, got, I, watched those, I read a lot. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. I, I was, well, so when I was writing the equality diet right before, so I self-published that, which was the, it's the, it's actually the second book I've self-published. I self-published like a little journal at one point, but, um, right before I was writing. So I had, I had full, you know, editorial, um, 
you know, if you will, like I could do anything I wanted right before the book was about to come out. And so right before it came out, that study in the journal Aging that Dr. Cara Fitzgerald, who we love as a functional medicine doctor, she's she's up here in this area. Um, she's in Newtown, Connecticut. She published a study, small, it's like 47 guys, but she put them on a, a diet um, and some lifestyle stuff for eight weeks. And they did the Horvath DNA M age analysis, which is kind of like the it's becoming the the standard of like how do we check check genetic age versus physiological age or chronological age sorry so genetic slash physiological age versus chronological age so they did this Horvath score which looks at biomarkers and they'll do some saliva and they look at genetics and put them on a diet very similar to like what we would preach like they were eating liver they were eating eight servings of vegetables they were eating like three ounces of liver sorry six ounces of liver a week which is a man so it's a, that's high i recommend yeah, like three or four ounces you know it was high six ounces of grass-fed beef every day every day eight servings of vegetables um and then uh i think some broth and they had to do mindfulness twice a day movement uh, sleep seven to eight hours. They were on minimal supplements, just a, a good probiotic and like a phyto, a phytoganics, I think it is. But anyway, you could look up this study. Um, we can, you know, I'm sure you can put it in the show notes. But what she showed in eight weeks, these guys took 3.2 years off of their genetic life. Eight weeks. And so I put that in the egg quality diet because I was, I wanted to be like, you know, your, wow. your number on your birth certificate is one thing, but like, how do you feel? You know, and I have this whole inflammatory symptom checklist too in the book. And I have it in most of my books because that's right. That's what we treat. When we see if someone comes into the clinic, like if she tells me, oh, I have endometriosis and I, you know, I have infertility for the last four years, that doesn't tell me anything. Do you know what I mean? But like what the symptom checklist is, tells me a lot. But so I try to get people to gauge their health on that. Yeah. So anyway, I've been going down this rabbit hole of I, I want to start doing basically my own kind of DNA analysis, this age analysis on all of my coaching clients. And um, and so I did it on myself. I got the Horvath. The, it's like a spreadsheet. You plug in your numbers from your recent physical and get this. I am 11 and a half years younger genetically than I am chronologically. What? Insane. Come on. Get it. That's but but for talking. the last, I'd say 15 years, I practice what I preach. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like maybe my yeah. New York City single days, you know, in my mid thirties, I drank more alcohol than I would have recommended, but like good quality alcohol. But other than that, like I, I, uh, I practice what I preach and, but it was, it's fascinating to me. So now, years. now I have 11 and a half years. I mean, 11 years. Significant. Wow. And so now I really want to, I want to start to show women like you can do this and, and here's what you can, how you can impact your genetics. And what I love about it the most though is Chinese medicine, right? We've been talking about epigenetics or, you know, our jing or our essence for yeah. thousands of years. And we've been saying, if you live in accordance with the Tao, right? If you live in accordance with the seasons and the nature and mm -hmm. you listen to your body and you sleep enough and you eat the right foods, you express your emotions you're going to live a long life. But also if you're a woman, you can have children until about the age of 49. Right. So that's what the, that's what our, you know, yellow emperors classic states. And it's it's very similar that we're seeing this now. There's all these biohackers out there. You know, I mean, Dr. X, I think, being one of them for certain um, of understanding, like, what can I do to really maximize my potential and at the same time, like increase or improve my longevity and actually like, I think reverse aging. And so, so many women are scared of their egg quality being poor of their age impacting their fertility. And I'm not saying that you can get pregnant into your sixties. Like I, I'm not here to preach that. I do think fertility does decline with age, but I think how we age really impacts the fertility versus it only being the number of years old you are. So yeah. you can age much better than maybe you currently are and detox your body better and thereby improve cellular health on every level. And you should be able to make good quality eggs and a healthy baby even into your 40s or even into advanced maternal age. That's true. Now, do you find this that um, uh, women that, that are younger, they may have some thoughts in their head. They're like, well, I'm young and I can yeah. I can just live any way I want to, you know, and eat whatever yeah. I want to and I can still get pregnant. But I, I don't see that the case in my office. I, I, I mean, I, I never see that the case in my office. 
Um, what do so you I see? think it's like the older we get, I, this is what I always say, the older we get, the more easily the pipes get clogged, right? So, oh. and, and I think about it from like a methylation standpoint, like yeah. not to get like functional medicine, but like, that's how I see it. Like methylation is basically like keeping things moving, cleaning on the inside, detoxifying, right? The older we get, the more compromised that system gets. But if you're genetically predisposed and maybe don't have the right methylation pathways, you could be 25 and not detoxifying properly. So there is a point you can get away with it. I think a little bit more when you're younger, but what we're also seeing clinically is these young girls are probably the most unhealthy because they were, I, I think it comes back to the health of their mom when they were pregnant with them. And so like, I'm, you know, 15 years older than a lot of those girls. And I think the health of my mom impacted me in a different way and and her health. Right. So we're starting to see the impact of generations. I mean, we know that that happens, but we're the women that are in their 20s right now. So they were born what in the you know late 90s or something like that. They are severely impacted by how unhealthy, you know, and not to say that the moms are unhealthy, but like the exposures to the environmental toxins, yeah. the microwaves, the plastics, all of that has such an extreme impact. And so we almost have a little more unpacking to do. Like I see women in my practice that are 45 making healthier eggs and women that are, you know, 35 or 30. I see, you know, it's, it's pretty fascinating to me. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, um, and I think everybody, a lot of women who are on the path to try to get pregnant and it's not easy. It's hard. Um, get very frustrated because they all have a friend that like eats McDonald's and is on her third kid, you know? And, and it's like, I agree. And I say, I was like, listen, you know, there's a couple layers to that, that I would like to break down. But one being that she probably just has a different genetic predisposition than you do. And she can get away with it more. But secondly, don't you want it? Like my job is not a positive pregnancy test. My job is to make you the best version of yourself on every level. So you can pass that on to your children because I'm about helping make the world a better place. Right. And so I don't think babies born to mothers that eat McDonald's are, are going to be the healthiest children. Like we know that we know that, you know, and it's not, um, a biased viewpoint. It's, it's scientifically shown, you know what I mean? Nutrition and pregnancy is, is crucial to the longevity and the health and, and poor nutrition and pregnancy shows clear cut that there's going to be chronic illness in that child at some point, you know, early on in their life. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's like, I think some women get frustrated and they want to be able to get away with it. But I think if you, you know, break it down for them, like the, why, like, what is it you're trying to achieve? Are you just trying to achieve pregnancy? Fine. But are you trying to achieve healthy child? That's going to have a healthy, long life. Mm-hmm. It's a different approach. It's like that optimal health. Um, like if you um, set the standard, I always when I ask patients, like, do you want to set a standard within your body? So to have a baby, your body does uh, listen to all the other organs are all kind of mm-hmm. communicating and they're like, I'm ready for a baby or I'm not. And like, I want to touch on this too. Um, when you talked about like methylation, we talked about liver, you talked about liver pills and we were talking about how the liver just keeps things clean. And the liver helps break down enzymes, it helps break down hormones, helps recycle them. Like in your book, books, you talk about taking liver pills and, you know, that genetic uh, passing down of all the information. Um, How much do you see, like, do you put all your um, individuals, all your um, ladies on um, liver pills to to help increase their methylation? Is that a standard set for you? Yeah, well, you know, I did it. 15, 17 years ago, just because organ meats are a part of Chinese medicine and most girls were blood deficient. So this is, I'm talking TCM now with Dr. Motley because he gets it. So at first liver was because most women weren't eating any organ meats. I mean, who eats organ meats anymore? Um, And most women were blood deficient from a Chinese medicine perspective. Liver is one of the best ways to build blood. I found a good source of grass fed liver pills. I mean, 15 years ago, you know, didn't really exist. And um, I started putting women on them and it was even before I wrote, yes, you can get pregnant. So this is probably like early 2000s. And what I started, I actually started saying liver is my my fertility secret weapon, like because Mm -hmm. these women started getting pregnant now with all the knowledge we have about the MTHFR mutation and methylation and methylfolate versus folic acid. What I actually think I was doing was I was treating MTHFR mutations. I was helping with methylation. I was giving them methylated B vitamins that their body needed. And then boom, they started getting pregnant. And that to me 
was just another like clear example of like Chinese medicine, thousands of years old, like we had it right. You know, we always just kind of looked at this. Mm -hmm. It's a very holistic viewpoint, but you know, that our food is our primary medicine. And, and then when, when, you know, when MTHFR and all that came out and we started talking about folic acid versus methylfolate and, and all of this business, which I think was, you know, I mean, I think Ben Lynch was kind of the leader in that and, you know, uh, MTHFR.net, but I think that was still like mid 2000s. That was not early 2000s that to me, I put the pieces together and I thought, oh my goodness. And then when we, the science of epigenetics, which I talk about in my first book, which came out in 2009, and it was a brand new field at the time. You know, they were just talking about like, oh, lifestyle impacts how our genes turn on or turn off. I mean, this is fascinating. We always thought we were just set in stone and you got what you got and that didn't matter how you lived your life. And now we're seeing epigenetics influences how we age, how, how our physiology, how we show up, um, our expression in, in the world. And same thing, Chinese medicine has been talking about that forever. Like one person could live this way, one person could live this way, and they're going to have completely different health outcomes. So, uh, so yeah, liver pills are a huge part or eating liver. A lot of girls like to eat it. I have liver recipes, I think, in all of my books um, on how to make a yummy liver pate with delicious bacon and lots of ghee and onions. And yeah, yeah, yummy. <laughs> and and when, when we talk about like uh, all of you listen about like the liver, how much like in Chinese medicine, like when I would like work on like quite a bit of liver points with patients. Yeah. And then I'd also, you know, followed up with like how the water element, like how the kidneys will feed up into the liver. And you'll find like uh, there's certain infections or certain uh, methylation processes. But like you said, then we'd run their genetic test, guys, and we'd find out like literally like MTHFR, there are many genes yeah, that MTA, expressions yeah. were, were yeah. basically recessive. And even their COMT, the genes that help you break down estrogens. And I was like, they, the Chinese sense. medicine had it right. Like it was like, you look at it, it was like everything. It fits together. Now I almost know what I'm going to see on the genes, right? Like now when I see the patient presentation, yeah. Uh, and now we're doing like nerdy doctor talk, but like, I'll see the patient presentation, then I'll get their genetic report, right? Because I've run it, but it hasn't come in yet. And I almost know what I'm going to see. Isn't that, you know what I mean? And, and not like, yeah. not obnoxiously. It's just like, I, I kind of, I can see the disorder. Like you can see it and you're like, okay. And, and that's what, uh, you know, I think is so important for us to remember too. Like now we have all this knowledge, we have all this data, we can run all these labs. They come to us with so much information it still comes down to for us as practitioners treating what we see. Right. And, and, and then also like where the emotions play into that too, of like, Oh, you have a hard time metabolizing X, Y, and Z. You also probably have a hard time metabolizing your emotions. Right. You know, it's like this, this thing of just trying to understand and, and bring it all together. And, and what comes out of that though, is just, you know, it's my favorite thing to watch is just, you see someone really come into like their full form. Like they start to fill up their body in this beautiful way. And, and take ownership of themselves and like take space up in the world. And like that to me is like, you know, what I want mothers to be made of, you know? And so it's like, it, it makes me emotional talking about it. But like, to me, that's like the beauty of it is just like, we're, we're bringing her back home and into her fullest form. And then from there, psh, you know, the baby comes through, right? Truly. It's like, when you say nurture and cultivate, like you and Dr. Axe talk about food is medicine about how to but the, the nutrient rich food you're talking about in the book, it's like you see how all of those things um, were meant to not only encourage like, you know, your digestive system, but like you said, it will help heal your emotions. Yes. It will help stabilize your biochemistry. And I think the beauty of it, like even supporting the liver and the kidneys um, with diet plan is like, People uh, in this day and age, you ever find that when they get really, really like kidney deficient or they're really so fatigued, they can't even enjoy food and they, mm -hmm. they're they so tired and they like, I just, I just eat to live. And you find individuals like that want to get pregnant and uh, yes. then they have all these toxins coming in. I, I don't, I'm, I'm shit like when you see that, because you know, they're, you're, you're cultivating their food. You already know when you see all their symptomatology, how do you also approach in your client sessions, like uh, with external toxins, we, we I, like I know that we don't, you just talked about plastics, you know, mm -hmm. like especially with younger ladies that you said are born early nineties, with like cosmetics. I mean, oh you, my gosh. You, you touch on. I know you have because I see it in the office as well. Well, I think that I think the statistic or the statement I use it a lot. At least I read it somewhere. The average woman is exposed to five hundred chemicals before she leaves the house in the morning. What hundred? And those majority of them are endocrine disrupting chemicals, which mean they disrupt your hormones. So 
if we just do two things, I mean, I think there's more that we should and we are all doing. But if we clean up bath and beauty and household products, which again, all of my books, I have lists on my website. I have Amy approved lists like we've gone through and done the work for you. You can use um, EWG's Healthy Living app, which I recommend anything under a two or Think Dirty is the other app. Anything under a two that scores under a two, two and under is what you should be using. Nothing else, basically. But if we clean up diet and we clean up bath and beauty products, like it's a whole different body, right? All of a sudden we've removed all of, like we've taken the job of the liver away. Basically, it's like it doesn't have to work so hard to detox. Now, now it can actually focus on processing emotions, absorbing nutrition, right? Um, or even the gut, like we know that the the gut and the the brain communicate. We know the gut is the root of the immune system. Like these are things that we know now. If we remove all these external assaults, now the body can actually do its job. Like how about supplements too? I'll, I'll get women. They come to me. They're on like twenty or thirty different supplements. Boxes it's, it's of them coming in. Mind right? blowing. Half of them have soy oil in them um, and corn and other fillers. And I'm like, okay. So we got to clean, like when I, in the elimination diet too, in the egg quality diet, I have 11 days where I say, stop all your supplements. Women freak out. They do not want to stop their supplements because they are so scared that not taking CoQ10 for 10 days is going to impact their ability to get pregnant the next month. But what I try to say to them is like, right now your body is so overwhelmed. It can't even digest its food. Like you're wasting money on these supplements and half of them have crap in them. So let's just, we got to clean that up. Um, so I, I really think like supplements should be prescription only at this point. Like I, I think, you know, only practitioners should be able to, you know, or whatever, at least like are coming from good sources. Like we, we trust Dr. Axe, right? We trust his team. We, we trust that he's putting the right things into them. But they're so they're not FDA regulated. There's so much crap, so many fillers in them. So it's you have to look at everything. So it's just like starting to overhaul your whole lifestyle, which can be overwhelming. But I do think too, the research shows us these environmental, these endocrine disrupting chemicals are not just impacting women and men and their hormones and women's ability to get pregnant, men's ability to create healthy sperm to help women get pregnant. But we see it in utero, the impact on the baby, and we see it long term on the baby. And that that to me is is why it should stop. You know, it's like if you, you want to do the own like I had like a, a photo shoot the other day. I had hair and makeup done. I don't care what they use on me because it's. I always say it's like frequency and consistency. So the stuff you use every day, the stuff you are exposed to every single day really matters. And that's your food. I think that's your relationships. Right. We say in Chinese medicine the how you build your chi right comes from the air you breathe like the, your your gucci um and i say that includes the the people you keep space with right the the energies around you like you have to think about that what am i exposed to every single day and how is that impacting my health and my well-being and then also my ability to hold space for a whole other human i mean it's a big job it's a big job making a baby it is and uh, like when you say like the environmental toxins plus um you talk about electromagnetics or you talk about too many supplements. Yeah. And I think that in society today, like, do you feel like, and you're just describing it basically, like we forget that um, it's almost like, I compare it like the body to like an iPhone. It's like, if you have so many apps stored in your iPhone and they're still running or open and you don't swipe them off, it still drains your battery. And then the mm-hmm. liver and the kidneys, in my opinion, are like the same yeah, way. Because you know, it is hard for it for individuals when they come in and they've, they have come, become quite dependent on certain supplements or prescriptions or something. And it clogs the liver. And I mean, I know I've seen it personally. And I'm not like I've had times where I'm like, OK, my philosophy has changed so much in the past where I'm like, um, I've, I've told myself, like, OK, we're going to just look at all your genetics and we're going to just go baseline and give you the main small yeah. things you need. I was like, because my mentor used to tell me, he used to say, Hey, it usually I, he would start off with like three type of, you know, supplements or vitamins or four. And I would like, doc, why do you, why do you do that? Like that low when they need more and they go, he says, they don't have enough energy to break it apart. That's it. You can't, you can't digest it. You can't absorb it. It's a waste. And, and the, the innate intelligence of the body yeah. would say, well, well, I can't, I haven't cleared memory space, like for my iPhone. And I've got too much in my liver from all these, you know, different things I'm taking, environmental toxins, maybe too many supplements. And then at the same time, everybody's like, well, I want to have a baby too. And I'm like, that, that doesn't work. I mean, and cannot compute, like cannot compute. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't, I can't. And, and that's it too, where, you know, we know this too, from like our adrenal axis, the HPA versus the HPO axis, right? The hypothalamus pituitary adrenal 
versus hypothalamus pituitary ovarian, most of us, you know, and, and you and I have probably worked a long time to not be in that state, but like at one point I for sure was, I was only in my HPA axis. I was just surviving. That's it. And if you want to help someone get pregnant, you have to get them to thriving. And every day, I always say this, fertility is a luxury, right? And we know that from a Chinese medicine perspective, or even from a physiological basic biology, the number one thing the body will shut down if it doesn't have enough is its ability to procreate and menstruation, because it, it doesn't need to do that. It's it just like, think about like a woman with an eating disorder. The first thing, like, I mean, her BMI gets too low, but you lose too much weight. It just stops menstruating. It stops ovulating. Cause it's like, that's an addition. That's extracurricular activity. Do you know what I mean? Right now I am just getting by people. I don't, I don't have time to think about these other things. Cause I don't have the resources for them. So if you are just surviving every day, it's very hard to get into thriving and procreation. Like procreation is on the, the other side of it, if you will. And so we have to, we have to take the load, the burdens off of the body. And that's, I think that's emotional and physical and nutritional and environmental. And then we have to nourish and replenish and get you into that, like, you know, and I always, I see it energetically too. And I know you, I know you do too, because that's how we're trained. But like, when we start to nourish and replenish, we see them get into, they start to thrive. Like they start to think about, you know, space in their lives and their relationships and how they show up in the world. And maybe there's more emotional space and maybe there's more physical space that's then created for this life to come through. But if it's just on autopilot, it's, it's very hard to create the space for this child to come through. I was, and I then was, if it does, I, I, I do worry about the long-term health of that child, you know, that is uh, inevitable. I think in our jobs, the more we know, unfortunately, um, you, you know, we, we worry about things that maybe we don't need to, but I do also trust spiritually, like that baby came through because it was meant to, and it has a purpose of course, in this world. And, you know, I trust always spiritually. I always go to spirit first, but, um, but I try to, I also see the more I clean up, mm -hmm. you know, the insides, right. The more she can receive that divine energy from the spirits and the heavens, the way we see it in Chinese medicine, like it has to come in through the top and then, you know, pivot at the root. And then that's where the kidney gets the energy. And so, and the more the body's gummed up that, that energetic is not coming through. So it's like opening them up to receive really is how I see it. Yeah. Do you see this? Um, I was reading reports. I think um, uh, this is about like uh, a little over 10 or 12 years ago, but I, you know, I was just like fledgling trying to like really get more and more in Chinese medicine about that connection with the, the pituitary pineal hypothalamus axis about being in fight or flight and being always anxious and how it affects uh, uh, the rest of the body. And I think that uh, there, the discussions and the research has been showing so much about how like our mindset will actually ch change us biochemically, which changes us physically. And I think that there's there's enough research, but I don't think it's really talked about, which I see in your books, which I love. Is yeah, and body belief, I talk about it a lot. It's yeah. really great. Like in the body, like I was looking, it's like she takes how a stress would people think it's just like waves, but I'm saying, no, waves are matter and they get into your body and they change you biochemically. Yeah. And then you're talking about how the connection. And I think that when we, you and I, I know we talked about how the, the body transmits electrical signals through meridians mm -hmm. and light. And that communication it sets up uh, highways of communication between the organs. But especially, this is what I thought was really crazy. The pituitary and pineal gland, they say like your pineal gland grows and gets bigger to like basically capture more theta frequencies and more frequencies for like prayer and meditation. So like it actually grows. So they've shown that when people are pray or have, you know, they, they go into like a certain uh, ohm or something like that. It actually increases the size of the pineal gland and it makes the, your brain more receptive to outside electromagnetic fields. So like you can actually receive more prayers or thoughts. Yeah, and, or downloads, right? Downloads, like, like they were doing these on, yep. like, you know, Eastern Orthodox monks and such, and they were doing research and they were like, that pituitary pineal axis was so great that their thermal radiation would like increase throughout the rest of the body when they really just sat because they were in such deep prayer. And I, I'm like, you know, and to me, that was like you and I see it like when you say, does it increase communication with uh, with divine source, with God and God comes in and, and actually communicates with the rest of your organs. And then mm -hmm. we see how the ego can come in and play and go, yes. no, I'm, I'm going to take care of this myself and yeah. do what I need to do. I can and, control this. I don't need you. Yeah. And that's why it's like with your book on autoimmune. That's one thing that you'll see that's really uh, 
prevalent throughout the book. And I, I we really appreciate that because I know that when Dr. X talks about like, I always try to get the inflammation down, but yeah. And there's that, emotional inflammation. I say there's physical inflammation and there's emotional inflammation. That's what, that's no what one's really talking, talking about that emotional inflammation. Right. And, and, but that is it. It's like, you know, and I, I heard it, I was listening to a podcast you did uh, recently with Dr. Robin Burson, and she was kind of talking about it as well of like, it's it's one thing to, we can tell people what to do. We can tell them when to meditate, when to sleep, how much to eat. I can give them an exact 100 day diet that's macronutrient balanced, but like that's maybe not going to solve all the problems. It might not actually get you where you need to go because there is this whole other emotional element that like you could do all the right things, if you will, from a physical nutritional supplement perspective, and it still doesn't work for your body because you're on fire internally, emotionally, like you're constantly either attacking yourself, judging yourself, doubting yourself. And, and those beliefs become neurotransmitters in your brain, which then impact your physiology. And you, you see, like, you can't get cortisol levels to calm down, right? And, and a woman trying to get pregnant, if her cortisol levels are not low enough, we're not going to make healthy eggs because we know cortisol impacts the androgens, which impact the outer shell of that egg. And like, I mean, we know that you and I know that maybe not everybody else knows that, but, um, and so to me, it's like, I could have her, she's rocking it out on the diet and the supplements and her partner is too. And they're, they're grooving, but all they do is constantly worry, stress. Am I going to get pregnant? When am I going to get everything's life is on hold for that pregnancy that's, that's where then you have to do that, the emotional inflammatory work, you know, and really unpack and, and start to work on belief systems, which, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of unpacking belief systems and shipping them because uh, you see radical change. Yeah. When you see those radical changes, you know, like you say, I love that term emotional inflammation. Um, when you see it, like a person comes in and you start coaching them, you start talking to them, working on them and you, and you can see it on their face that they worry so much. Um, what is your like um, if, advice to people out there, but also like what is one of your initial states? I know each person's different and you could say yeah. you need to do more grounding or, you know, what are some of the practices like uh, I know you're putting on the great plans. What have you suggested, like some of the initial things like for emotional health or spiritual health? Uh, what are things? Yeah, you I mean, it really is like a one on like I ask them, you know, I have the whole intake. Right. And then when I get on the call with them, I'm like, so I read through everything, but I always like to hear it in your story, you know, and so I let them tell their story. And you can pick up phrases right away, like their belief systems, you can pick them up. So then I start to say to them like, okay, so where did that come from that, you know, that there's a lot of fear around getting pregnant again. And it's like, oh, because, you know, I had that miscarriage or whatever. And then we start to like, un, you know, it's like, I try to kind of massage, but I have these belief worksheets that I'll do where I have women check off boxes of like, what is a belief that you currently hold? And it's like, you know, I'm too old to get pregnant. My doctor said, there's no hope. I've had a miscarriage. I'm scared to have another, uh, you know, my mom had fertility challenges. Like, so really get back to those beliefs. And so I, and I talk about this in body belief, um, mainly is where I introduce this tool. It's called acknowledge. It's called the art of shifting your beliefs, ART, acknowledge, reform, transform, or acknowledge, renew. I always forget. And then transform. Um, so first you have to acknowledge what the belief is and then say to yourself, like, can I, how can I say that better? And I steal that from one of my spiritual teachers, Abraham Hicks, where she always says like, how can I say that better? So uh, I'm scared to get pregnant again because I've, ha I I've had three miscarriages, right? So how could I say that better? Okay. Well, I still really want this baby and I am scared, but I'm willing to try. Okay. So that's like softer. Do you know what I mean? Just to start to soften it. Like, I don't think I'm not a fan of positive toxicity. I think that's the trending word right now where, you know, oh, I believe in my body. I can get pregnant right away. It's like, that's maybe too much pressure. So what if we just start to soften the statement a little bit? Can you live with that? And then can you start, and it does, it starts, and we see this in the neuroscience research. When you shift that belief system from this really harsh, critical one to a softer one, what happens is you start to see social proof of that in your world. Like, oh, I can soften this. And then you start to like open up to like, oh, and I heard this story about a woman who was just like me and she did go on to have a baby. So you start to like, basically like open up the glimmer of hope. You know, you're in this like hard black, you know, gray area or whatever. Well, it's black. And then you go to a little bit of gray and then a little bit more gray. And then eventually you get to this place of what I call transformation, which I don't think is a livable state, but it's more about when that harsh negative belief comes up. Can you talk back to yourself? Like almost like can divinity come through and speak to you and say, but but darling, like you're still here and you still want this. And so you're allowed, you're allowed to have fear and hope coexist. Like it doesn't have to be one or the other. And I, 
I think, I think that's a beautiful tool because I also think a lot of women come to me and they're like, well, I have all these affirmations and I say them every day. And it's like, uh, I think the universe or spirit or God hears how you feel, not what you say, you know, and so tuning, making sure that those are aligned, like it's OK to be scared on Monday and hopeful on Tuesday. Like that's also OK. You know what I mean? And 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 that we don't have to live in this like completely transformed state all the time of really being positive and fully aligned. I, again, think that's too much pressure. It's like, could I get a 60, 40 or a 70, 30? So I guess, I guess what I try to teach is compassion for self and, and however I can get those tools in. So it could be journaling. I'm a big fan of EMDR. I'm a big fan of tapping. I'm a big fan of, you know, um, I have like meditations that I've created, like all of that, whatever resonates. I have like a ton of things and I just send them and I'm like, pick what resonates. I have spirit baby conversations. I have, you know, like we have it all. <laughs> so I feel, but, but to me, it's still like, then what comes up for you? You know, what is it? And, and a lot of women will connect it back to a time way before it was a fertility challenge. And it was, you know, some belief system that they got, you know, our beliefs come from, um, you know, thoughts we think or things we see and hear at a young age. And so, then we start to unpack that of like, could it be different? Like, could, or could you say that that's not mine to carry anymore, right? That was my mom's or my grandmother's and I don't have to carry that burden anymore. So I'll do ancestral uh, work. You know, um, there's this one guy, John New, and he has this forgiveness prayer, which is like profound, you know, so a lot of forgiveness, a lot of compassion and just, but some women, I have to wait, you know, many sessions before I can breach that. Others, come to me right away, right off the bat. They're like, these are my belief systems and I need to change them because it is impacting everything in my life. So everyone is different, but yeah, there are plenty of tools. I just think it's about really first, you have to acknowledge what it is that you say to you. They say we have 50,000 thoughts a day. 90% of them are the same. 90% of them. Wow. Make that's challenging me right now. Amy. Like, yeah. yeah. So it's like, what do you say uh, when you look at yourself in the mirror every day? You know what I mean? Like, I have this thing where I'm always like, I'm critical of myself if I like move too fast, you know, and it, like it's a childhood thing. And, and now I'm just like, oh, that was just silly. You were just thinking too, you know, I have this, like I meet myself and I'm like, you're not stupid. You know, I might say that to myself. You're, you're just moving fast because you're, you know, you want to get to the next thing, but just take a deep breath. And so that's my transformation where I still have that kind of negative belief system or whatever that conversation, but I meet myself with love and I soften it. And fast, you know, and it used to take, you know, maybe weeks. Now it can take minutes, you know. Yeah, true. I think that uh, in, in Chinese medicine, when we see that um, how the body, the, the cycles, the circadian, the ori cycle of the day is yeah. built about the yin and the yang, where we have those expressive, energetic mm -hmm. times of our body. And then the next organ comes up in the cycle and it's actually about recessive. So there's such a do you find this like you just said, it, like about um, self shame and people like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta accomplish this. They're trying to push that yawn. They're trying to go harder, harder. It's like, but there has to have times of recessive yen. You have to like pull it in. So you're not trying to be self-critical. Like you just said, it's just like, you're right. Maybe I'm moving fast. Maybe I didn't do that the best I could have done, but just yeah. know that your body is meant to process those, those times where it's like a lot, some positive, mm -hmm. just negative, you, you're negative. And, right. You should have yin and yang. Like, um, again, going back to like Abraham, she says, like, if your life, didn't have contrast, you'd get very bored very quickly. Like you need a little drama, if you will, a little negativity, because it keeps you getting clearer on what it is you do want. And so instead of seeing that negativity as like the worst possible thing, and then going down that rabbit hole with it, you know, and I do think it's a, it's a, and we know that neurochemically too, it becomes like a trauma loop. Like we just go down it and we're in it. And then next thing, you know, like, you know, the diet goes to crap. We're not exercising that day. We're crawling back into bed. We're canceling meetings, whatever it is, you know, versus, Oh, there's that thing again. Right. So I'm about to do that thing. So I have a choice. Mm -hmm. I have a choice. Which pathway do I want to go down? Like, do I want to keep repeating the same thing over and over again? Or do I want to explore like, you know, uh, my friend Gabby Bernstein, she says like witness, just witness the thought. And then what do you want to do with that? You know, where's the next step? And that is so powerful. And it, it is, it's like the yin and the yang have to coexist at all times. Yeah. And we do, we do need time for the reflection, which is, I think what's missing the most, you know, in the clients we see, right. There's no slowdown. There's no me time. There's no reflection time. Um, 
it's just go, go, go. And all the things I have to do and check the boxes and all the supplements I have to take and all the, and we do ask a lot of our people and I'm not going to lie about that. You know, like here's your new diet. Here's your new supplement regimen here. I want you to move. I want you to meditate. Like there's a lot we ask of them. And so it is hard to fit it all in, but, um, but it doesn't have to be. And I think yeah. you can pick and choose. And I think you can say, okay, this feels good to me today, but you know, tomorrow a run instead of a walk actually feels good to me, or, or maybe I'm going to do my meditation time while I'm doing yoga on, you know, on Wednesday, instead of actually seated, me- seated meditation. Like I don't really care how you get it in you know, it could be listening to a guided meditation while you're out for a walk that works too. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, it's almost like listening to the flow of your body and what you need. And that's, I think our primary job is like bringing them back home and them being the rulers of their, you know, the emperors um, or empresses of their lives and taking in what we have and what we know works to help you optimize function. I think that there's a a, a shift in in healthcare. Like when people start to see that, when you start to remind them that uh, we talked about uh, being aware, like within their body, that, the whole body is built like in one aspect about communication and bipolar electrical signals that are going through meridians and and some individuals kind of get like um they they get really uh weary sometimes and they hear what is, what's about chi it's like you know it's electrical signals and your body is working all day to put electrical flow around organs through organs through your muscle tissue to help those organs balance chemistry tear down hormones recycle hormones and that way can keep the yin and the yang, the expressive of that organ, like to process an emotion. And I'm, I'm finding it very rewarding that, you know, when I, when I see your books and I see your posts and it's like when people see like, there's so many different ways you can look at an individual. And I, I think that now there's a shift more in healthcare saying, you know, seeing individuals up to 49 years old getting pregnant. I, one of my, my godson's mother was in her forties when she had a baby, they said she's not gonna have a baby ever again. And so I was like, we just had to get her liver cleaned out and literally got her liver cleaned out and methylated and that's it. And, and I'm not saying it's easy, but you've inspired uh, so many people with uh, how many people you've helped get pregnant and you're going through your, your process. Now I want to know, like with your, your health coaching, your, you know, your, where, where can they find you? What, what can they people do to get uh, on your, on your uh, list? Basically? On my list, go to my website, amyrout.com. I think that's the easiest. We have, uh, I think a great newsletter. We have a fertility quiz on there that you can take, and then you'll get fed right into my newsletter where you get probably too much free information. It might be overwhelming, <laughs> but um, it's good for you. And, you know, and I, I kind of cover all the bases in that. So get on my newsletter, follow me, um, Instagram. It's at Amy Raup. That is where I am the most active and everything does feed to Facebook from there. But I, you know, I love my stories. I love engaging. I go live every single week f- with free information, um, interviews, um, you know, lives with different fertility doctors and, and what have you. And so that is, you know, my favorite, my favorite thing to do. My favorite platform is, is Instagram and, and those lives that I get to do every week on Instagram and Facebook. And then, you know, my books and all that information is all on my website. Oh, that's great. So you guys know where to find her. And I, I think that, um, when you say there's too much, like too much, you can never have too much information when it comes to uh, infertility, you know, so I like it. Like you've had, um, one thing I just want to say and review on this is really great. I wrote this down because I was going through and I was listening to some of your, um, posts and it was like, some individuals always ask like, what do you do before like, you know, freezing eggs. And I think that like you go through that in your book and such, but she has such great, um, great advice. Like, you know, get weekly acupuncture, you talk yes. about, you know, take, she gives you a list about the vitamins and minerals that she um, recommends. She also talks um, about finding herbalists that can actually like uh, help you find good herbals that would help you with encouraging the strength of your reproductive organs, because, you know, people don't think that their organs can be strong. Like they, they're your genetics, you're right. Your parents' genetics, when they conceived you, that information passed right down to you. And I was like, and herbs have a lot of frequency within them. They can actually help disrupt or enter. They can disturb the interference, the patterns that you've been passed uh, passed down to you. So, um, again, Amy, we just, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate your time because this is so much good information. So, guys, check out the egg quality diet. And you also say like she has three other, bo- two other books. And I'm saying we, you know, anybody you know out there or yourself has any type of reproductive issues, autoimmune issues. It's a wealth of information, especially from, in my opinion, I love Chinese medicine perspective, yeah. but you can see the research nerd of Amy coming out. Yeah. And I, I say the nerd respectfully, cause I'm a nerd. Yeah, so. no, I love, I always tell our child, I'm like, 
it's good to be a nerd. You be a nerd. You, you pick what you want to be nerdy about and you be a nerd. It's so be proud about your it is, be proud. And I are nerds. And it's and actually being cooler it. now to be a nerd. Yeah. Like I, I find it like, I'm like, Oh man, all those times in the labs actually pays yeah, it off. It means now. you're passionate, you know, it's like, and, and you, you find what you love and then you dig deeper and deeper and you get more inspiration. Yeah. I just yeah, definitely. It. You're so passionate about it, guys. Check her out. Check out our Instagram feed, check out our website. And uh, if you need some consultation and some work, give Amy a call. Th again, thanks guys for listening to the Dr. Axe podcast. Um, we'll see you next time. And uh, remember, if you guys have any questions, send them our way. We'll try to answer them as well as we can on this podcast. Take it easy. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.